Since the very first Apple laptops were released, it seems like Mac users, and even computer users on the whole, have had this choice to make. You either buy a generally pretty powerful desktop computer, one that lets you use whichever screen, keyboard and mouse you like, often with some of the world's best parts inside. Or you could buy a laptop. The laptop option frees you from whichever one room a desktop could be set up in, you can work wherever you want, and what's more, laptops are packaged with screens, keyboards and trackpads all in one. The screen is going to be small though, and the parts won't be as good as most desktop computers thanks to size and power restraints. So both options have always had these benefits and drawbacks really. I do think things are beginning to change though. Desktop tower computers are not the only machines that can achieve really top performance these days. As early as 2020, the M1 MacBook Pro and Air, along with the Mac Mini, gave us incredible performance considering their small sizes. Apple were able to beat their own top-of-the-line computers by most metrics using ARM CPUs on these small ones, and as you may know, stopped making Macs with Intel chips inside at all during 2023. So it's partly because of these developments that some people with really demanding workloads are now able to run entire desk setups using only their laptops. Today, I'm going to be trying this out with my M1 MacBook Air. While almost five years old and built into a body designed by Apple in 2018, this MacBook is part of the first generation of Apple Silicon machines and really puts up a fight given some heavy editing tasks, as I'll show you. The first problem you have to think about when setting up something like this is that new Apple laptops have very few ports. My MacBook Air is about as bad as it gets in this regard. There's no way I'm plugging a keyboard, mouse, display, microphone and more into just these two Thunderbolt 3 ports without getting a dock or multiple splitters. It's that or I buy a new Mac with more ports, which is definitely not doable right now. Thankfully, a company called Ivanki reached out offering to send me one of their new docks a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sponsored to say good things about it, but I'll give you my honest thoughts once the setup comes together a bit more. The dock in question, by the way, is the Fusion Dock Pro OnePlus. Among other things, it adds three 4K HDMI ports, several USB-C and A ones, and can charge my laptop and phone at the same time. That's an array of ports larger than most desktop Macs even, so if it works as it should, I'll have a pretty decent desk setup. So fast forward an hour or so and I've connected all the wires and whatnot. I've gone with a 27-inch Dell 1440p monitor. I used to use this with my Mac Pro 5,1 and actually do have it plugged into both computers now in case I need to use either. 1440p offers a pretty high resolution picture at 27 inches while being relatively cheap and importantly not taxing the M1 MacBook Air too much. These kinds of monitors can easily be found for under $100 on eBay in used condition. I've also got my Razer Basilisk mouse and the trusty Apple wired keyboard plugged in along with my sound interface which I use for controlling my mic and speakers. Setting up your laptop to run like a desk like this is a really good idea because you can always just unplug a couple of wires and you're good to go back to using it on the go again. In this case I've got the Fusion Dock set up to manage all my inputs and outputs so there's only one cable even going into my MacBook directly. So the accessories are good to go. It's high time I put this thing to some real work though. I try and release a video every week which starts with a rough script for me to stick to. The way I have everything set up now, script writing is exactly how I'd want it to be. I'm writing on my old but ever dependable Apple wired keyboard from 2005, but if I feel like using the MacBook's own keyboard, it is right there in front of me. Going on to recording has never been easier since my recording stuff is just plugged in and ready to go. Condenser mics like mine often require a 48 volt power supply, so that's why I've got the whole interface thing going on. Time to talk about editing though. Is the M1 MacBook Air powerful enough to use as the center of my editing rig? Well, it is more capable than it looks. I'm running Final Cut Pro split across two screens. I always edit in 1080p because it saves a lot of time transferring data, and it is a little bit easier for weaker computers to handle too. Not to mention, few people actually care about watching YouTube above 1080p anyway. My timeline is not very complicated, but obviously there's 8-10 to 10 minutes of footage every time, and my entire 65GB video library for the computer to work with. The M1 Air stutters here and there, mainly when moving longer clips around and rendering overlays like text. Overall though, I'm very happy with how it performs. 
Editing video is among the more power-hungry tasks any user might need a Mac for. If you think about it, the prices of M1 Macs are pretty incredibly low these days for the performance you can get out of them. M1 MacBook Airs are available for as little as $450, and using a dock and a decent set of peripherals, it's possible to squeeze every little bit out of those dollars and run something close to a professional grade setup on the cheap. If you were to buy a newer MacBook Pro, let's say, you'd no doubt be paying closer to 1,500 bucks. The performance would be better, but not three times better across the board. Of course, a six or seven hundred dollar desktop Mac would be a fair bit more powerful and probably not require a dock to connect all your peripherals. You could try and snag a deal on an M2 Pro Mac Mini, for example. But the trouble with desk setups like those is you can't take them wherever you want to go. You can't use them when you're on holiday or on the train. So, time to talk about the glue holding my setup together. This dock, the Ivanki Fusion Dock Pro One Plus, is capable of incredible things. I suppose it's partly a testament to the insane power Thunderbolt 3 ports have on Max, but using just one port connected to the Fusion Dock, I've been able to add the following things to my M1 MacBook Air setup. Three 4K ready HDMI ports, a micro SD and a full size SD card reader, a 10 gigabyte per second USB-C port, and a power delivery one capable of fast charging devices up to 20 volts. Another audio port, a Kensington lock, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, and no fewer than four 10 gigabyte per second USB 3.2 type A ports. The dock also charges the laptop it's plugged into, as it's got up to 100 watt charging built into this mega USB-C cable. Those features really do amaze me, and it's been able to pull off everything it claimed it would too. Uh, I guess it does get pretty warm to the touch, but not so hot that I worry about it, really. Would I recommend you buy one, though? Well, it depends what you use your computer for. If you work from your laptop a lot, and it's the only computer you own, it does seem like a really good idea. I run this channel off a laptop, and being able to see what I'm looking at properly, as well as plug in all sorts of drives and accessories to help me produce videos, is a big help to what I do. The specs of the Fusion Dock One Plus are really, really good. But of course, they do come at a price. This model will set you back $199 US dollars right now, so if you're not doing some serious work on your computer, I suggest it might not be entirely worth it. For those producing videos, working in audio, or any number of scenarios where you might need multiple monitors and equipment plugged in, I'd strongly recommend you do give a fully spec dock like this a try. It gives your existing computer an upgrade where it probably needs it the most, especially if you own a MacBook with just two ports like I do. Thank you very much for watching. Big thanks especially to my patrons who support the channel financially. If you're into technology, old or new, feel free to join the What's On Your Screen Discord server. It's growing pretty quickly and there's a link to join down in the description.